Hello and welcome back to this channel. Today's tutorial is going to be an absolutely beginner friendly tutorial because one of the recent comments on my post was to make more beginner friendly tutorials. Um, so this is for those people who want to learn fresco and are absolutely new to digital art. So I have covered a bunch of things in this video. So you will be learning all these things by doing. I truly believe in learning by doing, so I'm not going to go ahead and explain what a mask is, what a clipping mask is, but I'll show you exactly what it does so that you know how to use it for your next illustration, okay? Okay, so let's just get started. So once you open up Fresco, you'll see some document sizes here. If you don't see it, that means that you haven't used Fresco much, so it hasn't saved your most used items here. So if you don't see it, just click on create new and let's go into print and click on small postcard. Okay, so I have a color palette for you guys. So go ahead and bring it into your fresco. So you can click on this here and it'll show you a color palette. So let me just click on this tiny arrow here. So this is all the color palettes that I have stored. By the way, to get them into fresco, you have to store it into the Adobe Creative Library. That's a little, little different process and we're not going to do that in this tutorial. Instead, we'll try and put all our colors into a recent style. And one of the ways to do that is to bring in the color palette inside and then choose the colors. I'll show you exactly how to do that. So go ahead and download the color palette from the link in the description box below. And once you have done, it goes and saves in the photos. So we're going to go into click on this images here, go into photos, choose the color palette and bring it in. Once it's here, click on done. So now to pick colors, make sure you're in one of these brushes. Doesn't matter which brush, by the way, click and hold until it selects this color and you see that this color gets selected and then make a mark on your artboard so it comes as a new layer so don't worry about it and if you click on colors here and go to recents you see that color has been selected here so the main thing about making this mark is how your color gets up here so make sure you go ahead and select each color and make a mark let's do that for all the colors So once you've selected all the colors, you can click on this eye button here to hide that layer. You can also go ahead and hide your color palette. Okay, so let's just start illustrating. So I'll be using quite a few brushes for this tutorial and we'll try to use masking and clipping mask for our illustration. All right, so let's go into our brushes, pixel brushes. I'm going to go into all and in here I'll go into ink and I'm going to choose Belgian comics. So by the way, for each brush, if you select that, you can see this star here, for example, here. And if you select that star, oops, if you select the star, it shows up under your favorites. So I actually have added quite a bit of brushes here like this because there's so many brushes, it's easier to go back and pick whichever brush you want, you know. So I'm just going to go ahead and choose Belgian comics. So it really doesn't matter which size you're on, but I have kept it at 88. You can actually click on it and use this slider to go up and down or you can also click and hold and you get this tiny little keypad where you can type whatever you want like 88 and click outside and it gets selected. The flow is set to 100 and the smoothing is set to 1. Uh, rest are all default settings of this brush. Okay. Now let's go ahead and choose an orange. I want this middle orange, not the dark one or the light one. You can actually click on this HSP slider and it shows you the hue saturation brightness for each color. So when I pick something, you can see it's 4200. 100. Now let's click on a new layer by clicking on this. And now let's draw a round or roughly round like this. I'm going to go ahead and fill it with my brush itself. I'm not going to use fill tool for this, just like that. No particular reason actually. Okay, and I'm going to make sure I draw this properly. It doesn't matter that it has to be a nice round, you know, just sometimes oranges are not perfectly round, right? And now let's convert this into a mask. Just click and click on mask layer contents. So as soon as you do that, you see this black and white layer. And there are two things here, reveal and hide. And it's set to reveal. Good, let it be like that. And if you swipe like this, you'll see the actual layer, which has the... You know artwork so now if you want to draw something you need to draw on this layer okay so what does this mean this means that the black areas are somewhere you cannot draw anything and the white area is where you can actually draw stuff okay now swipe and let's go ahead and draw this orange right now okay i'm going to go ahead and select this darkest orange that i have and i will go into my dry media 
And in here, I see this soft chalk. I'm going to use that brush. And my setting is at around 230s. It doesn't matter that you have to be at 238. It can be any number around that number, okay? And flow is obviously 100 and smoothing is at 1. So what I'm going to do now is add a bit of texture here like that, okay? You see? Something like that. And I feel like I need more texture to it. So I'm going to go here and go to soft pastel and add a bit of texture like that. You can press it a little bit. So it gives you a nice texture like this. Okay. And I'm going to increase this to about 240s again. Like both my brushes are at the same level. Okay. Going to add a bit of texture here like that. That looks good. Now I'll go into the lightest color that I have, lightest yellow. And I will go back into the soft chalk and I'm going to add a bit here like that. Can you see this? Like this and I'll go into soft pastel again and I'll increase this to about 300, 350. I'm going to add a bit of texture like this. Just here. Now I'll go to the middle orange because I'm not happy. So I'm just going to add a bit of texture here with my pastel brush. And you can go back and add more dark orange here if you want. You see, look at that texture. It looks nice, doesn't it? So I'm just adding it. So every brush, the amount of pressure you put, it gives a completely different result. So this is my too much pressure. And this is basically light pressure. And that's what I'm doing. I'm adding light pressure so that there's a nice texture happening here. And have you noticed something? None of it is actually coming on the white layer. But if you actually look here, you can see that there is stuff on the white layer around here. You just cannot see it because we have masked the contents. So let me just show you something. What if you feel like your orange needs to be a little smaller? This is too big. You can always use the eraser tool, obviously, but I don't want to do that because I want to retain it. So what I can do is I can go ahead and go to the brush tool. I'll go back to the Belgian brush, by the way. I'm going into favorites because I've already favorited it. So I can just pick it up. Instead of reveal, I'm going to go into hide. And I'm going to go ahead and draw like this. And there you go. It has actually hidden it. You see that it's still there. We haven't changed the orange layer at all. It's just that we have hidden that layer. Okay. If you want to reveal now, you can just click on reveal and go back here. And do you see that extra bits that we have drawn? It's all coming up. Like that. I'm going to undo it by using my two finger tap. By the way, three finger is for redo or you can use these buttons here. Okay. So this is all done on the mask layer and not on the actual layer. This is for hiding and revealing the mask. That is the area that you want to paint on. Okay. Once you're done with that, let's click on new layer. Now you can actually swipe so that it's here. Let's go ahead and choose green. I'll take the light green now and go back to the Belgium brush, comics brush, whatever you have. I'm going to add a tiny, oops, be on this new layer. Add a tiny thing like this and I'm going to go ahead and draw maybe like that. Okay. Now I want to add some dark bits to it, but I'm not going to be using mask. I'm going to be using a clipping mask. So click on a new layer and click on this icon here that is called a clipping mask. And now let's go into the dark color here, the darkest green that I have. I'm going to go into my soft chalk and I will just add a bit here in the side like this. Okay. And maybe go into my soft pastel and add a bit of texture just a little bit. Okay. That looks good as well. And now you might be wondering, why didn't we just do mask? Why did we do clipping mask? That's because with the clipping mask, there's one really good option. That is, you can always go ahead and hide that layer and completely get rid of whatever you created just now. And not just that, you can also create multiple clipping mask layers and top it one on the another. Like for example, here, click on new layer and make this clipping mask. And this clipping mask will be applied to the parent layer. That is this layer and not this one, by the way. Okay. So you can make like multiple clipping masks and add texture upon texture or things like that. For example, I'll go here and since I don't have the color, I'll use green and maybe make it a bit lighter and then Oops, go back to Belgian brush. 
or Belgian comics and then do my leaf like this. Okay, there you go. So it's as simple, you can do, you know, as many clipping masks as you want. So you can go ahead and hide and unhide layers as and when you go, but with a mask, it's a bit different, but mask helps you in a lot of different ways. What I do where my workflow is, I use clipping masks for most of my process, especially with vector brushes, because there was a time when this mask was not available for vector brushes and I got used to clipping mask and so I just use it. Okay, so that's done. So let's just add some shadow below the leaf now. So you can go back to your layer, which has the orange, by the way. And then we can choose the darkest orange that we have. I think it's this one. And then go back to your soft, uh, what's that? Soft chalk or anything that you have. You can slightly add a bit of orange here so that there's a kind of a shadow happening. I'm going to go back into my uh, pastel brush and kind of give a bit of texture here as well because I think it's missing a bit of texture. I like really nice textury artwork, you know, so I think that looks good. Okay, that looks good. Our orange is almost ready, but we need one more thing that's freckles. So I'm going to click on a new layer now. You can go ahead and click it anyway. It doesn't matter. And I'm going to go into my watercolor brushes. You heard me right. Go into your watercolor brushes. And in here, click on watercolor round detail. So my brush is set to 102. Flow is set to 82. You can keep it 100. I'm going to keep it 100. And the water flow is set to 38. Okay. And now I'm going to go ahead and choose this brown. Let me do this. Okay, this brown. And I'll just go ahead and do some... Oops, that's too big. Let's just make it 60 or something. And I'm going to do some freckles like this. Like that. Okay, that's more than enough. You don't have to do more. Okay, so let's go ahead and now make a background for this. Now I'll go back to all the way down to this layer or you can go into this layer and click on a new layer and you get this layer here. So I'll just go ahead and choose my soft chalk no let's see soft pastel no problem let's use that and i'm going to click on black here and i'll just go ahead and you know draw some things here you can actually put some pressure here and there by the way just make sure you have really dark stuff right around the orange like that okay okay that looks cool but i want to mix it up a little bit so i'm going to go into my colors choose my orange on or the lightest orange that I have. That's the color. I'll go into my watercolor brush now. You can mix both pixel and watercolor brushes, by the way, or the live brush, it doesn't matter. I'll go into watercolor wash flat. It's about 300 or 400, doesn't matter the size. You can keep it all the way up. The flow is at 65. I don't want it to be too dark, that's why. And then water flow is at 47. You can actually increase it if you want to. And now I'm going to go ahead and add some color here and you see it's it's blending so nicely with the artwork like that. You can go ahead and add some color here and there as well. And it nicely blends. If you feel like you need more black, just choose black and go back to your pixel brush and you can add some black like this. It doesn't matter actually. But the watercolor texture will go away, obviously. So if you want it, you have to go back into your watercolor brush. And let me show you a really cool trick. If you double tap on it, and now it's on the center, you can just draw. And this gives pure water. That is, there's no paint on your brush right now. It's just water and it's mixing up real nice. Okay. And once you're done, you can double click on it to let go of that. And then you can see this. Okay. This is the shortcut thingy. And if you don't have it, you go to settings and in here, this touch shortcut, make sure you turn it on. Okay. All right. A bright orange is ready, but we are not done yet. So I'm just going to be in that layer itself and I'm going to go into eraser tool. I want to show you that you can actually choose erasers. Like they have different, different kinds of things. I'm going to go ahead and select gritty circle now. And my setting is at 125, flow 100, and smoothing 1. And I'm going to go ahead and draw some circles like this. There you go. So you created something using the eraser tool as well. So you can use this eraser tool to create a lot more things and not just this. So I just wanted to show you that eraser tool. You can have different kinds of brushes for that as well, okay? 
Now let's go ahead to the top of this background layer and I want to draw one more orange right now, just one more orange. So I'm going to go into my lighter orange here, Belgian Comics, and I'm going to go ahead and draw one here. This looks very dark, doesn't it? Let's go ahead and, yeah, it is. So I'm going to go ahead and choose this orange here and draw an orange. Okay. Now click on a new layer and make this into a clipping mask. We can do that for this orange as well, by the way. And let's go into this darkest orange that we have and let's choose the uh, soft pastel and add some texture over here. And I'm going to go ahead and choose the lightest orange that I have. And I'll choose this soft chalk. Add a bit of a highlight here. That looks good. Now click on a new layer. I'm going to make a leaf for this as well. So go ahead and click on the green that you have. And let's go to the Belgian comics. And make the same thing here. No, I want something else. And uh, your second orange is done as well. Oh wait, we have to add one more clipping mask to the leaf. Go to our lightest orange that we have, I mean lightest green that we have, and make this. That's it. That looks cool. Now you can add more things to this. I'm going to go to the topmost layer here, click on a new layer, and go into some red. You can actually choose colors like this. So I'll show you how to choose colors, by the way. There are two things here. One is this main ring where you go and select which color you want. For example, I want something red, so I'm going to keep it here. And this is actually the shades of that color. So you can go ahead and keep it all the way here to choose the reddest red that you have. I'm going to go into Belgian Comics. I'm on a new layer and I'm going to draw. You know what? I want more red. This is not red enough, so put it down. And you see, you have a nice little strawberry. And you know what? Let's make it into a raspberry. That's right. Oops, how do raspberries look? Something very similar to strawberry, I guess. I really don't know how to draw this, okay? Click on new layer, clipping mask, and I'm going to go into white. I'm going to keep the same a brush and I'm going to go ahead and draw like this okay and let's go to green new layer this is not a clipping mask like that and let's go to this layer now and click on new layer and it comes automatically as clipping layer because it's below a clipping layer so let's go to that red we chose and bring this down a bit so that it's darker and now we can go into the soft pastel and add some texture there you go so you have this created as well and once you have it if you want you can group them together you see there's so many layers it's very annoying right so once you have it click on these three dots click on select multiple select 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 click on this folder to group it together and now if you click on I it disappears so once you have this ready you can click on this share icon publish and export export as and you can export it as a PNG or JPEG or whatever you want and export it. Click on done. So that's it. That brings us to the end of this tutorial. And I hope you liked it. It was super beginner friendly. We didn't create something awesome or anything. It's just very, very simple. And uh, I hope you create something unique. And I hope you learned some tools over here. And if you did, please give it a thumbs up. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. And if you want to support this channel, you can always buy me a coffee at coffee.com. You can find the link to do that in the description box below. If you do create something using one of my tutorials, uh, share it on Instagram with print me some color or think beyond color. I would love to check it out. Okay, I guess I'll see you in the next video then. Bye-bye.